So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here. And today in this video, I'd like uh, to introduce Paramecium to you. Paramecium is a unicellular organism. This means it's made of only one cell. However, it is able to perform all of the functions of life, uh, also of higher organisms. So for example, we humans have to feed, Paramecium has to feed. We humans produce carbon dioxide as a waste product. The Paramecium does as well. Yeah, and there are many, many more characteristics that we have in common. However, there's one thing that Paramecium is able to do that we humans are not able to do, and that is Paramecium is able to reverse its aging process. And how it does this, I'd like uh, to explain later a little bit. Now, Paramecia were discovered in the 1700s, relatively shortly after the microscope was invented. And it was probably one of the first microbes that was seen under the microscope because it's a fairly large uh, cell. And uh, here we have uh, Paramecium next to a so-called rot rotifer. And rotifer are true multicellular animals. They're micro animals. And rotifers have approximately 1000 cells. And simply by putting them next to each other, you can already see that uh, the cell of the paramecium must be huge compared to the cells um, of the rotifer. The early microscopists, uh, of course, uh, also made drawings of what they have seen. I wanted to show you now two of these drawings. And I'm very fascinated by the detail that those early microscopes must have been already able to resolve. Because not only the drawings are excellent, but look, the person even was able to see the cilia. The cilia are the little hair and uh, that these little hair, they move and they beat to move the paramecium forward in water. And those hair, they move so quickly that they're quite difficult to see. And uh, if the person was able to draw them, then he must also have seen them. And this shows that the microscopes also must have been pretty good um, at that time. How many different uh, paramecium species are there? Paramecium, after all, is a genus. So this means there must be several species there as well. And yes, as a matter of fact, there are. Under the microscope, scientists have uh, identified, based on shape, based on their shape, approximately around 20 different species. But further investigation has shown that some of them look the same, but actually are genetically quite different and probably do not belong to the same species. So you see, it's a very complex thing because it also depends a little bit on how you define what a species is. Now, I think that the biodiversity has to probably be extremely large. Usually the biodiversity of microorganisms is much larger than what we anticipate. So I can imagine that, yeah, the biodiversity also with the ciliates and within uh, the paramecia must be huge as well. And there are almost certain, certainly more than just 20 species of paramecia around. Now paramecia feed by a so-called oral groove. This is an indentation that they have on the surface. And this is where the food particles are all sucked in. Usually they eat bacteria. I have also fed paramecia before with yeast uh, and it's also possible to feed the milk because uh, the fat droplets in milk are also going to be used as a food source and uh, when all of those particles are sucked in into the oral groove then a food vacuole will form and the food vacuole will then travel inside the paramecium and it's being digested and then there's also a so-called anal pore where the remaining food is expelled again and during this process, um, the nutrients are absorbed into the cell and then the cell, of course, grows in size. And this movement of all of the cell organelles and food vacuoles can quite uh, nicely be seen when you look uh, at a paramecium under the microscope. Now, as the paramecium grows and grows, it might uh, become time to divide. And the paramecia, they divide by asexual reproduction. And this means that uh, the DNA has to be copied. And then there are two cells forming by a transversal division. And then you have two cells. However, there is a problem with this asexual reproduction. And that is, is that the two copies that you have now are genetically the same. Now, the good thing here is, is that uh, as soon um, as uh, it divides, uh, it's able to divide again and again and again. So it's able to multiply quite rapidly this way. That's the good thing. However, there is a disadvantage, a huge disadvantage. And that is, is that the population of paramecia that you then have is genetically the same. And this is a real problem in if there's a changing environment. Because as soon as the environment changes, the paramecia will not be adapted anymore and they might become extinct. Um, however, if there is a certain genetic variability or genetic diversity within the population, then some of them are probably bound to survive. This has to do something with evolution. 
The question is now is how can you ensure that there is enough genetic diversity within a population? And you probably have already guessed the answer. It's sexual reproduction. And that is really the purpose of why pretty much all living things reproduce sexually. And those that don't, and there are a few examples of those as well, they have found other methods to ensure that there is enough genetic diversity. Now, in the case of paramecia, what they do is, is they have the possibility to conjugate. Conjugation means that two paramecia, they will fuse together, they will line up, they will fuse together, and they will directly exchange DNA, and then they will separate again. And afterwards, their DNA is not different. And therefore, you have then a population um, of different uh, of different uh, paramecia. And in order to ensure that the DNA is really different, yeah, the paramecia have something like a macronucleus and several micronuclei, which are genetically different, and they are then exchanged. It's all a little bit complicated. All I want you to know now is, is that there is a mechanism there to ensure that the DNA is mixed. And now this has another significant advantage, and this is where we talk about the reversal of the aging process. Scientists have discovered that after approximately 20 cell divisions, the paramecia starts to become weak. They start to become less agile, as they say. And scientists think that this is because their DNA becomes damaged the older the DNA the cells become. And the more often they divide, the more and more the DNA damage starts to accumulate. And by doing such a conjugation process, this also renews their own DNA and they become young again. So in that sense, sexual reproduction in paramecia also reverses the aging process. Uh, that's also a, quite a new thing that I myself did not know um, some time ago as well. But there, as I have to tell you, there is always something new to discover um, and, and to learn here. Scientists also investigated whether paramecia have the capability to learn. And uh, actually, one would expect that they should not be able to learn because they do not have a nervous system. They do not have a brain. They're just made of one single cell. But a very basic form of learning has been observed as well. And scientists try to train paramecia to respond to light uh, if there is in the case of an electrical current. And uh, apparently this worked, this experiment, and scientists think that they're able to store the information in a form of epigenetic modification of DNA. Now that's uh, quite a long term. And this means that uh, the DNA sequence stays the same, but there are chemical groups attached to the DNA, uh, which can then also be passed on and inherited. And I think that this is uh, possibly a way, or scientists think that this is possibly a way on how information can be stored, maybe also over generations. But this, whether this is true learning or not, well, that is, uh, of course, a little bit up to debate. Uh, and I'm also sure that much more research has to be done here. And after all, paramecia are also able to sense their environment. So when you look at them under the microscope, uh, then you're able to see that they will move into one direction and then they will reverse their direction when they bump against an object. Paramecia also have the possibility to move towards oxygen. So they're able to sense an oxygen gradient. Now, how are they able to do that? Well, if there is a place uh, somewhere where there's a high oxygen concentration, then there is an oxygen gradient. And if now the paramecium is in, in there, in this gradient, then one part of the cell will sense a large, larger oxygen concentration than the other part. And this is how the paramecium knows into which direction to swim. So you see that uh, even those single-celled microorganisms somehow have been able to solve the response to an environmental stimulus even without a nervous system. Yeah, it's it's really fascinating what nature is all is able to manage. Paramecia play a very important role in the environment as well because what they do is, is they break down organic material and they decompose organic matter thereby returning the carbon back into the environment and closing the carbon cycle. Otherwise, uh, organic waste would build up and build up. And uh, yeah, if it were not for those decomposers that break it down again and return the carbon back into the environment in the form of carbon dioxide. So you see from an ecological and an environmental standpoint, those microorganisms play an incredibly important role. But for me, I think I'm going to call it quits now. I hope it was interesting for you. Happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye-bye.